Uh, how are you? Did you have a good sleep? So, so. Woke up at five, read a bit of a script, went back to sleep, woke up at eight. Great. How long does it take to learn a script? That's one thing. To learn one? Well, I mean, that's like how long a piece of string, but how long's your, how, how big's your... Brain? <laughs> uh, it really depends, you know. Uh... It's something over time that I imagine you get better. I mean, I tend to read a script about 300 times. You know, just that's kind of like the old, I don't like that's kind of my process of getting ready. And you know, so when I arrive filming on day one, I like to know the whole thing off. A lot of us have forgotten that you're at your trade, if you will. You're an, a an actor. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I am. I've got to go back to work. <laughs> yeah. But you've imagined, like, you've managed to take be part in two films in the space of what a year I don't know how the like the time span works out well actually since 2019 I shot three films so essentially the racing season for me would be beginning of April to end of October and then I have that window from November through to end of March to do any shooting that's available so would you say that your childhood dream has always been to become an actor well, I mean, my early childhood dream, of course, was, you know, racing. The first time was probably at the age of 12. I usually came home when he was finished in school in the afternoon, and he would say, can I not have a go at the car? And I always said, no, no, no. And then one day, I said, go on, then drive the car home. And from then on, that was the beginning. We sort of lived in, um, uh, right beside the Hotel Europe, there was kind of like a long horseshoe road. And that is the road that I learned how to drive on. And my dad just sort of let me drive by myself on that road. I think he, uh, he got a good handle of the car. I was always um, really, you know, obsessed with cars and, and used to watch uh, primarily, I guess, Formula One with my, with my grandfather. And I found it quite boring, you know, uh, in the early years, just to, the sort of cars going round and round. And then later years, I really got into it. I went to go-kart track, I think, for the first time when I was like, 14 or something like that. And it just felt like natural to me. But we never had enough money to go and compete or get into the sport. But it was always a dream. It was a far off dream. It was one that would never you know, happen. Through the acting, I started to become more successful with that. And I then just started thinking again. I was like, maybe when I'm 40, I'll just step away from the acting and try and get into racing. When I first got to race at places like Spa, Hockenheim, Monza, you know, all these places, it's sort of one of the, it's definitely moments where you, you know, you're pinching yourself. It's always the first time I sat in a, a racing car, just that aspect alone, I was thinking to myself, wow, this is, this is kind of, you know, incredible. Obviously, the pinnacle of GT racing then is Le Mans. And as an amateur, it's the highest challenge I think you can have in racing, for sure. So does that mean that you fulfilled your dreams of reaching 24 hours of Le Mans last year? Welcome to the Circuit de la Sarthe for the 99th anniversary running of the world's greatest motor race. I thought I have an understanding of what the track layout is. I did know a lot of practicing on the sim, so I knew what to expect. But when we arrived last year, I just remember feeling quite intimidated by the place. Wow. Sunday. I just thought, you know, take it easy. Again, I'm quite overwhelmed by the place, but the Sunday went really well. The first session, really slow. The second session, cut the time by quite a lot. 
and made improvements then again when I got in the car for the third time. And at the end of the Sunday, it felt pretty good. On the Wednesday, Matt Campbell was radioing in, saying the car was handling strangely, it was behaving unpredictably. The car is really sketchy for Porsche. Uh, can't go down at all. These ones are a little bit different on the front axle. Okay, copy. A bit weird. Totally different to what we drove. Really strange. I didn't get into the car for that whole first uh, practice session. Then I was thinking, well, you know, this is like valuable time. You don't get a lot of time, obviously, in the mall. I was sort of starting to panic. I was like, well, I've got to get out there. I've got to get out there. Maybe I should go out during the qualifying and just get some laps in. Is there a world where I can go out in qualifying and do some laps? Yeah, it's possible, yeah. For the qualifying session, it gets a lot more intense. And it was apparent to me immediately as soon as I left the pits. This. And he's got the Is that a Porsche in front of him? Yes, is he going to get out of the way? He doesn't know which way to go. He has to get around the outside. Definitely lost a bit of time there. Tell him not, not to push too much. Nice. I had an accident. I had a big accident. I felt like, uh, you know, an idiot. And I knew I'd done a ton of damage to the car. No, it was a bad one. Bad one. Perhaps unnecessary to try and catch up in a session that was uh, gone, you know, that we lost earlier today. It doesn't, like, excuse for me whatever I did at, at that breaking point. Ten bars, extra pressure, too much, whatever happened there, and I know I take a look at it. But it's like... I guess we've only got one splitter left now. Splitter's not the issue. Chassis? It's gone? We're out, we're finished then. Oh, we have a spare car. And the mechanics went to work, worked through the night, built the car back up. But I was just emotionally and mentally not solid. Michael, I know it's hard, right? But chin up. Yeah. And the, the car is there. Yeah. And it will be there. And we're in this and it's good. Don't, honestly, don't, you know, Fuck it. It's racing. I know, yeah. Honestly. No expectation, no lap time, nothing. Just go there, get a feel for it again, get some confidence. Like I said, yesterday it didn't happen. Forget, really forget. It was so out of sync and I could just never find a rhythm there. And I just started to mentally spiral down. And I was sort of, you know, outside of myself, judging myself. You know how to drive. You have to get rid of this feeling. Yeah, I know, I felt like I just started again. It was, it was awful. As the week progressed, and, and when we arrived on race day, I was definitely not in a, in a good mindset to take on that challenge. Here we go. The Mon 2022 is on. Go next? No, it's going to be fine. Then I had to try and find a way to reset my confidence and sort of clear the accident from my, my mind. And I never managed to recover for the whole race. It, it just sort of continued from that sort of mindset and just got worse as, as the sort of race progressed for me.
know what to say. I thought I left him enough room there. Shit. Right now, I'm afraid, in the barrier, once again, Michael Fassbender. It looked like Michael was trying to give as much room as he could, trying to drive off the track almost in, in avoidance. He's trying to come back very, very slowly to the pit. No risk, no risk in staying on the racing line. I can't steer this thing, it's totally fucked. The annoying thing is, he's going to take this so personally, right? And, and it's really nothing to do with him. It's not his fault. But you can, you know that he's going to beat himself up. All good. It wasn't even you, mate. was not your fault. Not no, you Michael, was not your fault. He came no. in so fast, straight into you. You did the right thing. All good, man. At that point, I was mentally, you know, gone. It really did crush me. It was like one of those pressure moments in my life where I felt like I didn't manage to punch through. The pressure definitely got the better of me. So why did you want to go back? I felt like I had to go back. Because, you know, with the whole build-up of, of getting there, I didn't want to leave it the way it was. Road to Le Mans was a huge project to take on, obviously, because your objective was one of the, big, the biggest endurance race in the world. But where did it all start out? Where did the idea come from? And when did, you know, the first connections start, you know, being created? You mentioned uh, you met Patrick Zemtsy in a flight to L.A. How did that, did, did that start proceedings? How did everything start off? Yeah, so basically Patrick uh, got me um, in contact with Sebastian Borowski. I, I don't know why, but I was on a call with Patrick when I was in, in Daytona. He said, well, you know that Michael is there. I was like, Michael who? And he's like, Michael Fassbender. I was like, well, no, I didn't. So he's like, yeah, um, go by and say hello to him. And I was like, what do you mean? Go by and say hello. He's like, just, you know, say hello from Patrick. And I was like, God damn it. Because I didn't really want to do it. I didn't know Michael. Um, I heard the name before, but I didn't know who it was. And I didn't even know who I was looking for. I didn't, you know, I didn't have the face to the name. I mean, obviously he was there and a lot of people standing around him. And I was like, hello, um, this is Sebastian. Uh, I just spoke to Patrick Dempsey and uh, yeah, he wanted me to say hello. He basically told me that his big dream is to go to Le Mans and once race in Le Mans at the 24 hour race. And I basically told him, well, if you really want to do it, if you're serious about it, you need to come to Porsche and uh, work with us. And I was like, well, I'd love to. You know, I've always loved Porsche. You know, being born in Germany and just, I've always loved the 911. I've always loved that shape of car. And it was always my favorite, like, matchbox car. And then it was about what are the building blocks to getting to that race. So we said, okay, let's go to Leipzig. We have our own track. Let's give him two days with a cup car and then see how he does. He needed somebody that knows racing and knows, you know, how to drive a cup car. And so he came up with Felipe Lazo. For me, it was just like a, basically like a two days training with like a VIP. Actually, we were surprised because he did quite well. For us, it was always clear that he has to learn a lot of stuff before we make it to Le Mans. And we decided to come back for a full year of Porsche Sports Cup. There was the call to Philippe, it's like, would you be able to do it? And would you actually want to team up with Michael as his coach? Yes or no? And he immediately said yes. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, it's really yeah. Later. One year down. There were so many new things going on and he was just unexperienced. So it was a huge yeah, learning curve and we had ups and we had a lot of downs. OK, I got a heavy crash. up the ladder, let's say, quite quickly, from cup car to LMS. Because Felipe and I and Sebastian, we developed quite a strong relationship early on in the German Sports Cup. Halfway through the season, Sebastian and I sat down and said, what about Felipe as our silver driver moving forward? 
and I will never forget the call. Michael's jumping into the RSR and please uh, make sure that you bring your helmet. All of a sudden, this was my main thing. I was really like, let's go to Le Mans and just, I mean, it's a lifetime experience. And then we knew we needed a platinum driver or a gold driver. You asked me the question if I want to be part of this program. So I said, yes, I want to be part of it. Not even knowing what he was talking about. The first impression, everybody liked each other and was sympathetic. And then you, know, you learn the character in difficult uh, moments. All of that was, uh, was a very steep learning curve for me. No, I'm not being impressive. No, I'm, no, dude, no. I'm just being realistic. I'm out of my league. You know, this is such a massive step. That's where I really felt out of my depth in that first season in the LMS. I think that was basically the first time he really panicked and he realized that he signed up for a project that is very, very um, demanding. It's the Proton competition, that's Mike. But is that Michael Fassbett? Are you okay? Oh, man, that was scary. Fuck, sorry, bro. For sure, there's always ups and downs, and we had that, and we always talked about it and come back and try to avoid the situations, and we, we worked uh, quite well together. I mean. Then at the end, I think it was a quite smooth first season. So I think that he improved in total as a driver. But you know, it's, it's never over. You always uh, uh, continue to learn stuff. And for us then, the decision was quite clear. Let's stick to ELMS, do exactly the same thing. We know the tracks, we know the series, we know how it works. Actually, let's aim for better results. Michael, ready to check one, two, three? Check, check, check. So we started knocking on the door around the podium places. This is the last lap. Last lap, just bring the car home and we'll be two. I just remember a lot of satisfaction. It was a huge relief for me and I felt like it was something that the team also, I think, needed. After one year of cup racing and two years in the LMS, it was finally the year that we would go to Le Mans. I got a message from the FIA that they promote me to a gold driver. We lost Felipe because he was promoted to, to gold status. That was, that was tough. We knew that he wasn't going to be in Le Mans with us in 2022. That was massive, you know, that was massive for everyone, and certainly for him. It was clear at one point that we have to find a new driver. Zach came on board the team and, you know, immediately fit in. We kicked off the season really well. What a finish to the first round of the 2022 European Le Mans series. And Michael Fassbender on the podium in the LMS. It became such a collective journey with, you know, the incredible team that we have from Felipe, Richie, of course, Zach last year. You know, amazing people, you know, giving so much of their energy to me and trying to sort of help me improve. But at the core of it, you feel it's a definite obligation. And the, the four years leading up to it, all of this stuff was sort of weighing on me. So there was a lot of, I guess, expectation um, that I put on the event itself. I immediately knew this is not the end to the road to Le Mans. I mean, this can't be, this can't be the result that we've all worked for uh, for four years. His dream was basically crushed, you know. Well, I think at the moment after the after the race week, it was not a dream as he wished for. I think it was a nightmare. For so many years, it was it was such a, a passion of mine. And then I was thinking, why am I racing? Do I actually enjoy it anymore? So it just turned into something that I never had any perception of, that I never had any idea. It was just so brutal for me um, 
the experience of itself. There was times, of course, I just wanted to hang my head and be, you know, by myself. And um, there was a lot of support from everyone around. But at that point, you know, I was in my own space and there was nothing much for me to take away from it personally, I felt. Even though we did finish it, I, I couldn't see it as a positive at that point in time anyway, not for sure. At the end of the day, it, you know, really, you go home and you have to process it and find a way to get your mindset back in the right place. I found that I had to reevaluate re what the dream was. You know, actually, after Le Mans, I started doing some shifter card and it brought a smile back to my face. And I kind of lost a lot of my love of the sport and there was a lot of questioning on every time I left the car track, I just had a big smile on my face. You know, we all experience failure, you know, in life and there's very few that, that rise to that top step. So for me, it was just important to not give up and to just keep going, you know, to just, to just do it. In any sort of progression, in anything you do, it's, it's about failing and then failing again better. The, the important thing for me is not to be suffocated. I had to figure it out. It was only me that was gonna figure it out. And now I knew that it was just something I had to do. What was it like to see him come back, refinding that love for the sport again? I think Le Mans is a big race and it's tough and everything, but you should not have a fear. And therefore, I think it was important for him to come back. And uh, the motivation to come back was big enough that we, you know, uh, talked to the, to the sponsors, talked to the team, and everybody was trying to, to do one more year and get him the chance to be back. And, fight these demons, you know. So I think that at the end, um, once he was over this pain, uh, I think he took quite some uh, motivation out of it. From that moment on, we basically planned what we could do to prepare Michael, but also to start the year in a positive way. So we went to Austria. It was just fun two days driving around in nice cars, having fun without thinking too much about the pressure and you know all the things that we usually deal with on, on the tracks. In 2022, we basically went to Aragon and everybody was like, okay, this is the last test before Le Mans and we have to make the most out of it, but the pressure was quite high. And this year we actually arrived and said, you know what, let's test as much as possible, but you know, let's also look at it as a test. If things don't go away, let's not panic. Um, let's just stay positive. So driver change for Michael. <laughs> Michael, are you set? Yes, sir. Okay, we are going to go. Oh yeah, turn one is much better. Nice. Welcome to the 20th season of the European Le Mans series. Kick off at Circuit de Catalunya, Barcelona. After last season had ended, we knew that we were losing our solo driver again. So Martin Rump um, was the silver driver for the season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the team already last year in a different car, but I was I was like kind of you know watching him as well uh, go go through the paces and. Uh, it was easy that he implemented in the team, and he you know it was a, a plug and play situation. And also we got a new race engineer with uh, Roberto Gomez person that we know very well because we've worked with them a couple of times. Yeah, a lot of things were new, but we hope that we could basically continue with that positive trend and yeah, have a good start to this season. Free attack, free attack. Off clear. 
Okay, we are going to go. Exactly, yeah. That's the only thing. It's like absolute neutral. So when the times aren't fast, neutral. When somebody tries to fuck you up, neutral. Track limits, it's about just being a fucking like non-emotional yep. being in there. You know, that is the only way. I think he's more relaxed. He doesn't care so much anymore. I mean, he's still competitive, but uh, he knows that there is a certain time where the lap time is going to be faster and there's a certain time where you just have to su survive and do the job. anymore so what you did now the level of push is very good it was much more than yesterday don't try to go now extra on top okay. of that it doesn't work okay. especially with the temperatures going up as well <coughs> keep that put the lap together we're sorted if i can if i can drive like that i'm happy i can only drive the way i can drive and we'll see if it comes to everybody was a little more relaxed from the outside it might have looked like we were not taking it as serious as uh, in 2022, but I think for the team it was the better approach. For this year, uh, he's definitely made a big step forward, big uh, improvement as, uh, in general, and also you can sense it from the overall confidence that he has with the car. So this you could straight away tell in Barcelona in the, in the testing. kick off as we have done on a couple of occasions before at Circuit de Catalunya Barcelona. This is going to be a really intense fight and some unknowns that will be cleared up, Greg. Please clear the green. Michael Fassbender starts the 93 Proton Competition Porsche. Different colours for that car this year. We knew that Michael has the pace to compete in the fastest bronze drivers. And if he brings the car back in P1, 2, 3, 4, our team normally always had the best silver and platinum drivers. We need grid position. We need to compact this grid. We need to compact this grid, please. European Le Mans Series though is go. Season 2023 has 42 cars head for turn one. And Marino Sato wasting absolutely no time at all in trying to get the nose of the United Auto Sports 22 car down the inside of Rui Andrade and Kiffin Simpson by the looks of things. He's got to third position. Vlad Lomko, the 17 year old. Oh, oh. it in the back. And that's the Monchal Spiegel team, Monchal, Rinaldi car. in this lap. You are behind at the moment, you are behind at the moment. Okay. The German Irish Hollywood superstar then is uh, not very far away from joining this party. Just for third and fourth position in GTE. Fassbender certainly has the pace to be with them. And the vantage point of Michael Fassbender in the Proton Competition Porsche, sitting in fifth place in the category, looking for a way by. Oh, oh there is him. a touch. There, there is, is a touch. touch from the nose of the Porsche. No, no way through there for Michael Fassman. Michael, you are much looking at the Ferrari. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good pace, good pace, you're at the moment. 
Fassbender is able to hand the car over. Now running in second place after a completely fault-free run. Mike brought the car back in a really, really good position. We're really in contention for the podium for sure, if not even the top step. Radio check, radio check. Radio check, love and gear. I think the best race we've seen so far for Michael Fassbender. Oh, good job, man. Oh, thanks, really dude. Good. Thank you, thank you. You were doing the same pace as the leader, so... Oh, fuck, I thought I was way slower. No, no, you were on the pace of the top runners, and now you did like two hours, and it was like super good. The car in front of us was like 10 seconds in front of us, with Richie and Martin in the car. As I already said to Michael, okay, this is going to be a podium for sure. 93 Porsche, by the way, cycling back up to third position now. Big gap, though, before the second place can all that. Good job, good job. Someone else off. There's two cars two involved cars there. there. Come on! Guys, what the fuck? Yeah, we saw the contact, it was not your fault. The other P3 uh, type bomb actually leaves some space there, but uh, I think he overshot. Sorry, guys. It was quite a, a bad luck for, for Martin. Uh, he couldn't avoid this clash because it was a, a late move from the LMP3. This destroyed our hopes for a, a good results like podium or even even I would say P2, P1 could have been possible. Shit. Yeah, sorry. Shit. Hello. <laughs> Did a good job. Yep. Shoulder, it's okay. Yeah, they're getting better. I That's multiple, cla that. multiple class racing, you know. It's always going to be like that. So we can fight for podium. This is the most important thing. Listen, I'm totally happy. I think, like I said, I think. What you guys did, what we did as drive, everything, I think we did. I don't think we could have done, I mean, there's always obviously you can do better, but I thought it was absolutely solid the whole week. It was a great week, how we progressed through the week, finding time, set up the car. Nothing to say that we, I think we did everything right. The way he drives is a lot more under control. Everything was fine and it happened so easy, automatic. So I think the, the evolution he had from 22 to 23 was a very good one, um, was expected because we tried to work on that. And I think he was ready for Le Mans 23. Do you think that that bad experience helped you become a better driver overall? I'm I'm not sure. I think it helped me become a better person. You know, uh, well, just to sort of be able to take a blow like that and to also get over yourself. You know, at the end, you know, I came out of Le Mans and I was sort of like moping around. And then I was like, you know, just get over yourself. You know, nobody cares. <laughs> you care. And, you know, what are you, how are you going to go about moving forward? How confident were you going into this year's Le Mans? I, I wouldn't say I was confident, but I was calmer. I knew what was, what lay ahead. Welcome everybody to the centre of France, to Le Mans, with the world's greatest endurance motor race. This is the absolute zenith. Hello. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. 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 Le Mans is the big one. Are yeah. you less stressed this year because you've done it last year or not? I think, you know, I, I'm trying to enter now, like I say, in, in a position where I just, you know, it could be my last Le Mans, so I want to enjoy it. 
and uh, take the experience from last year and, uh, and try and learn from that. Michael knew the plays, Michael knew exactly what to focus on. I knew how to support Michael in a better way because uh, I saw him last year and knew what, you know, what helped him and what really distracted him last year. Mentally I found it uh, very challenging, uh, perhaps one of the most challenging things I've experienced. Are the butterflies still here? Is it still buzzing? Absolutely, I mean, um, you know, there's, there's always nerves, but um, perhaps a little more contained. Than, than last year. Kind of because you know what to expect that was ahead of you, perhaps? Yeah, I think so. He has learned from his mistakes. I think he reevaluated a lot over the, the break and really worked on his, on his mental um, capacity or mental strength. I'm just trying to stay as sort of mentally focused and positive, knowing you know, what, what the actual race has got in store for me, and just enjoy it. You know, This could be my last Le Mans and I just want to make the most of it. And, uh, and it was important for me to come back, you know, after last year and the experience I had. I was just thinking I have to go back and perform the way I think I can perform, because I don't think the performance I did last year did, did justice to myself. You know, we want to be competitive, um, and I feel more relaxed and more aware of where I need to be mentally. Hopefully this year I'll, I'll be more familiar with it and uh, the event itself. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy to be back, very excited. The goal was to, to go there um, and just stick to the plan. make a smooth race week, to be ready for the race start, to have a good car balance, to you know, stay relaxed, to have Michael in the mindset of you know, not having any pressure. This was the ultimate goal. Happy? I very happy. I'm very happy also. Yeah. And this time, it's, everything is under control. Things Martin, will get out of control yes. as always. No, no, no. But no. you know what, it's all good. <laughs> everything will be... Here to enjoy it. This is the most important. You need to enjoy, and, and if you enjoy, everything else is, is under control. I told you, we are here from Wednesday, so we check 100 times everything. The interesting thing about Le Mans is you arrive on the Friday, the week before the race. Then there's a lot of sort of media stuff to do, private briefing and whatnot. You do the track walk, the test days, it's Sunday, and then Monday and Tuesday, you have other obligations to do. You're back in the car on Wednesday, and the days you're actually driving are the less tiring days. If Le Mans gets in your head and you are uh, not able to, to focus yourself, it's easier to make mistakes. You are not relaxed, you care too much, and all the little stuff is going to be an issue. It's all the other stuff that pulls you here and there that kind of um, can be quite exhausting. So I knew that I had to manage my energy. Welcome everybody to Le Mans for the first on-track action. So the plan, Richie first, then you, five and five laps, and then Martin, Martin, and you at the end for another six. Okay, Richie, we push the car outside, we bring the dash, and we go for two laps, two laps. Complete. The start of the weekend here at the Centenary Le Mans 24 Hours. Radio check, Michael. Check, check. Michael got his first laps done quite early. His lap times were on the same pace as the faster lap times in 2022. And I think it's just there's so much shit on the track. The tails of my It takes me a while to feel that confidence. It's just me building up to it, knowing that's going to come and being comfortable with it, you know? Look at the first Porsche, the left. Fuck, I'm nowhere near. I think it's because of low grip. Yeah, yeah. Like there's right no grip on the track. It was a natural development of the track, like always, so we started to get better and better. Porsche, this is a like, 
but it was so much time in that section. What was your fastest lap time last year? 405 and now you did a 409 I think. Porsche corner is the place where you are losing more time. Porsche corner and mood sun, the braking. So you need more laps. I know, yeah. No problem. In the beginning of the week the times were definitely not great. Still four or five seconds off is his actual goal. So from the mean and rhythmus by a feet to feet by Step by step. System continuously same rhythm. Don't try to enter even quicker now. We concentrated on the points we had. Let's support Michael the best way possible, but also this year we just approach it different. You know, taking moments for ourselves to relax, go back to the house, have dinners at the house, try to stay away from the track as much as possible and you know not get too much into the the Le Mans vibe, let's say. We weren't there yet, but this year we just didn't stress about it and really took it day by day. Three, two, one, go! Ah, uh, is better to lose a second there. Exactly. So for tomorrow, First session is from 2 to 5, then we have the qualifying and then after the night practice. Well hello everybody, the cars are about to go out on track for the free practice and then we will get into qualifying a night practice from 10 till midnight. We do one installation lap, we box, we check that everything is fine and then we go for 13 laps. On the Wednesday we came back and actually it was much better than 2022. <laughs> So we change the splitter, we put the medium, and then if we need, we come back with the splitter and we continue with the medium. There are a lot more shots like this, so it's for sure easier for my game. For me, it's this one. Our car really drove good from the beginning. We had a very stable rear, we had a car with a quite good front. I guess when you can jump out. The line of, from exit to this is perfect. There I can break later too. Go power. You can carry more speed. Away they go. Just under an hour yep. left in this session. Remember carting turning earlier. Earlier, turning more care. Yes, yes. It's a very fast lip time though. Maybe like a five or six, something like that. Yeah, oh, oh, that's oh, that's oh, that's 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 and that is it for FP1. Michael Fassbender finishing his stint aboard the number 911. For me, the car feels great, except karting is fucking like. With the goals in 4 2, you were happy. Very nice. You, you, you managed the, the traffic, you know, after Indianapolis. It, it looked under control. We are, you know, trying to avoid also putting him out in, in, in the wrong time, like the qualifying, and took basically out all the risk that um, could basically destroy or, or damage our weekend before it even started. The sun is setting, the beginning of free practice two. Good job, good job. Again with a good lap to go. Super, yeah, yeah. All in all together, it will be a four, two, four, three. Thursday at Le Mans and we are deep in the middle of practice for all the cars, the 62 entries. When you keep that rhythm, the time will, will come further down. It was five seconds quicker from one lap to the other. You start to use the tire, the car, you start to use the track, the lines, the speed. But I definitely enjoyed the end of this session. For the first time, I enjoyed the session, you know.
we were there, we had a, a good car, a good team. We had uh, Michael in a good rhythm, so I think it was a very smooth um, approach and also very smooth start of the week. And I think I never had uh, any smooth start like this for Le Mans. Bienvenue, welcome to Le Mans in France on a misty, slightly drizzly morning as we get ready for the start of the centenary of the world's greatest endurance motoring event. Look at the crowd. Yeah, that's fantastic. The biggest day sporting crowd of any event this season. More than 300,000 people packed around this eight and a half mile racetrack. the day of the race, I was eerily calm. I, I wasn't feeling the, the, the fear that I had the, the year before. I wasn't feeling, feeling overwhelmed by the place at all anymore. We've had a few drops of water in the air most of the night and all of the day. The weather is moving away to the west there. It's quite dry for the rain, huh? Could mean that there's like a heavy shower at one point. But could be also hot, no? Ich finde, es fühlt sich schon so an, als wenn es einmal den Wolken aufmacht. Findest du nicht? Weil es so schwül ist. This is the pinnacle of ambition. This is the race that can deliver on your dreams. If you're not a professional racer, if you have the skill set, you have the passion to do it and follow through on it, this is the race that you can come to. And that car, the number 911 car, is one that proves it. How you feel? I feel good, man. Yeah, good. I feel good. I just, you know, had to come back here. I feel like calm as well, like a weird calm. So, let's see. Good, good, good. Like I said, I'm here. That's the main thing. Let's see what happens. Information to the pit lane, the race is declared wet. The race is declared wet. Radio check. Radio check. Golden clear. Almost. Green flag waves. Start of the formation lap. One formation lap. We are getting ready for the start of the centenary race at Le Mans. All cars to assume grid positions. Let's close those gaps. The centenary of Le Mans 24 hours.
get into the wet now. And this is where the potential danger is. It is very wet here. They are on slick tyres. Oh, oh there's, there's a barrier there. It's a 311 into the barrier on the exit of the first UK. Brass, brass. Brass, brass. Safety car, safety car, stay out, stay out. Richie was taking it really easy. Don't touch anybody, just make it safe, just follow the others. I know in Le Mans if we stay out of the box, just do our job, there's a high chance to be in top six, top five. That is a huge shot, the That's a 14. 14 Michael, get ready, get ready, get ready. Slow zone one in 15 seconds. There was a heavy crash with an LMP. Oh, we might react, so... Roger that, man. And the moment is a slow zone. No, okay, but we're ready, yeah? Oh, oh another nice. big crash. Oh, my heavens. Two crashes now. The first hour was really hectic, and we were just waiting for a moment with a lot of slow zones, or maybe even a safety car to put Michael in. Big crash there in GTE Am. 60 car spun into the number 16 Porsche. Oh my heavens! The United car just absolutely goes into the side of the Porsche. Are you ready? So box is up. Box, box, box. Fuel high. Driver check to Michael. Go there. The plan was always to give Michael seat time early on in the race so that we could take off time of his minimum driving time, which is six hours, to be flexible with the, the strategy and the end of the race. as well in the next couple of minutes. And that, uh, in about the next two minutes, there's supposed to be rain arriving at the Porsche curves, and is that it's starting to sprinkle in the pits as well. We need to tell Martin to be ready. So as soon as it's raining, then we go, yeah? Okay, I'll be, I'll be ready. Yeah. There is a turn now of rain. So in case of rain, we'll be again four meter stop and driver change to Martin. Yeah, but like, worst case only, yeah? But if it's raining more, we stop. If we have to stop for tires anyways, right? Yes. We're getting reports of rain at several parts of the track. This is going to be making these poor guys crazy for the next 24 hours. So the first time I went through, it started spitting down. There was still grip. We all hoped that it would just be a quick shower and that Michael could basically survive that. Take care, Porsche corners, and not much. Yeah, slow up, very slippery. Turn the rain up by the Porsche corners. Stay out, stay out, and we see this lap. Let's see how it is now. But remind him after, after Mölsan, uh, before Indy, you know, it looked like it's heavier. We are ready in case of heavy rain, we will stop and we will do the full bit of stop and drive and change to Martin, but at the moment it's pay out. When it rains at a certain part of the track and the rest of the track is dry, you can't really put on anything other than slicks. You just have to try and do your best in that section that's slippy. Richie, Richie, it's regnet richtig stark da. Guck. You don't need me to tell you, but the rain is coming down out there and more possibly on the way as well. Just let me know when it's heavy up in that section when I'm coming into it. From one lap to the other, the rain picked up so much and it got so crazy that it was dangerous um, to have Michael in the car. My micro, in case of more rain, we will do a full pit stop. Martin is ready. Oh, there's the, one of the GTM cars. The battle of the cats. How heavy is that rain at Indianapolis? Rain uh, on, now. Heavy, heavy rain in this corner. Next corner is heavy rain. Very, very, very slow. Very slow in Indy. Very slow in Indy. Heavy rain. All cars, green lights on. Green lights on. 
Das würde jetzt ein Teil von dem Box, box, we box. Langsam, langsam, The race has just started. I've just started my first stint. We didn't want to take any risks, so better to put the pro in, get me out. It was just too difficult to drive or too dangerous to drive. Fuck me, man. Hey, tell him heavy, heavy rain, huh? How much did I do? 20 minutes? No oh, idea, it was so intense. It was raining so heavy on Mo San that even behind the safety car, the cars were going off. It was mental. A lot of water on the track. So we need to survive in the in Porsche corners. So the most important is to be safe. Let's just keep everything safe right now. People are dropping like flies. It wasn't too bad because all the other teams had to do the same thing. Everybody had to pit, everybody had to change the rain tires. So normally there is no more rain expected. I mean, now it's no point of uh, sending you out anymore if the safety car comes in. Then we can wait until it's dry, right? Because yeah, yeah. like mixed conditions is kind of like the worst. Yeah, yeah. I guess I do a double stint at night, double in the morning, and then a double early, you know, early later morning. He'll do another run, and then I go in after. And maybe we try to do double. With you. I think we have to, yeah. Martin drove for two hours, and then it was clear. Okay, let's put Michael back into the car because the, the, the strategy was still the same, right? Let's take off some, some parts of his driving time. Back to green flag racing at the one after four hours and nearly 20 minutes of action. Oh, yeah. down there's a 38 car, that is the race leader, yippee yay! So, your next driver will be Michael for another spin. We go into the night. Box, 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 fuel, tires, driver change to Michael. Like uh, all things are dry at the Porsche curves. 
Green lights should be turned on. Green light on. Slowly. Everything was dry, and then just coming towards turning into turn one, it just started through the rain, just started hitting the windshield. I downshifted two gears, opened up the steering wheel, and I just put my foot on the, the throttle, and I managed to get out of the gravel. And then it was like, get back to the, the garage, out of the car. Someone needs to be reaching to be ready. I cannot find Richie. Was Richie? Three more cars off at Indianapolis. Racing Team Turkey couldn't get it slowed down in the conditions. Come, schnell, schnell, schnell. Ah, das regnet die Sau. Ja, was soll ich machen? Ich weiß es nicht. Der kommt jetzt rein, ne? Box, box, box. We need to kill and drive it to reach it. Box now. Yes, it's in the box. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. driver minimum drive time of six hours but I'd only done 47 minutes in those two sort of attempted stints and then it was you know what do we do next as soon as it's dry he needs to go for a double stint so normally it should be better and better and three four should be 100 percent dry so that means three o'clock then yeah yes. well then you're going back to the container right and tell him that he should come over in uh, 20 minutes he has to be here here After Michael went to bed, it was up to Richie and Martin to push through the night and just keep the car between the white lines. The only thing that really is not is broke the ground so it's favor. Yeah, it's just like this now, just on the cables. We need to come in because the wheel diffuser is completely flat. Look at the diffuser flapping away. Oh, that's the 911 car, isn't it? That's a little bit second here. This is the battle for second place in the GTM category. We held Fry in front of Martin Rump. Through Tetruge and out onto the Mall Sun straightaway. Who has the horsepower? So Fry trying to hold off Rump as they come to the first chicane. 
You know, the boys were doing amazing. Martin and Richie at one point were leading the race. I went back to the trailer and I just felt kind of exhausted as well. How do I wake up? You know, how do I get myself in a place engaged physically or mentally to get in the car and go racing? Who's out there right now? Rumpy. Any bronze? I don't know. Big dead tree. Fuel, tires, driver changes to high gear. Radio check, radio check. Check, check. Complete on the PR, so we go for the risk team. Goodbye. Times were not terrible, but slow, not great. But did the two hours, got out, I was scheduled to go back in at seven o'clock. You happy? Good. I mean, it's the best I could do. Oh! Holy moly! And the toter involved in that. Oh, trouble! Oh, trouble oh, trouble for 63. The 63. That's big trouble. Yeah. That's the end of the race for that car. It was just sort of the usual, you know, you go around, you try to get a good rhythm. We managed to see the, the sunlight, which is always a nice, a nice feeling, then the so-called happy hour arrives. So you have a sweet in the barrier. That was a big one. Seeing our teammates having some difficult times crashing, and I think that at the end, at one point, there was just us plus um, the Iron Dames still driving the rest already DNF. Yeah, I got, I got like just under an hour, so it's good, I feel better. Half of the field is gone already. I think the hardest part, you guys survived, so just... Yeah, I just found the car so difficult yeah, to fucking drive. Yeah. Maybe it takes a bit, so that's why don't start really like yeah, yeah. this on it. Get the feel. We knew that we have to still do a lot of driving with him. He had two hours and 47 minutes of his driving time done. Box, box, box. Fuel, tires, and driver change to my car. For me, it was always clear that we pull him out after two hours and then put him back into the car late in the race. Behind you, fighting for B1, to let them hide. I left both cars by there. Michel Gatting on pit lane in the Iron Demons car. This is going to move them back to third position. You can let Richard Tyson go by. He's quicker. Yes, yes, yes. They can go by. Tell on the left. This is turning into a fucking shit show. I get all this shit up now because they don't overtake me. Enough now of this shit. Time to calm down. All this shit on my tires now. Tell him to shut up and concentrate, it's enough. For the first hour and a half, hour and 20, I started going into that like funk. The time started dropping again. I was doing 408s, 409s. I was like, what is going on? Always it's not a good sign when the driver you know, talks too much on the radio because he should actually focus on driving it. Three, four, nine. What position are we? We are P8. Really struggling here with this balance or tires, I don't know what. We need a lot more hours from him. Okay, you struggle too much. We will have a team and then we will do the other one later. No, 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 we stick with the plan. Okay. Can't slow the fucking thing down. You see that, right? I don't know what the fuck's going on. Michael is tired, tired, tired. Still two stints. I find it difficult to turn in and then all of a sudden it's not the oversteer. We do pit stop and you go in the car because I think he's... What are you planning to do? Get him out now? 
He has yeah. to fucking concentrate, it's just mental. And Sebastian was like, no, no, you have to do the double stint now. You know, there's no way to go, to go out after this one hour because uh, we, we have the minimum drive time and you have to do this double stint now. It's just his fucking mental shit. Tell him very strict, concentrate and drive. It's bullshit, it's always the same with him. Stop talking, tell him. I got really, really mad, you know, questioning the car, questioning the, the setup, everything. And I was just like, just get your shit together and drive the stupid car. Just tell him he's doing good and concentrate, you know? I tell him, you are doing good for 11, he will say, hey, it's not true. Tell him, yeah, it's double stain tires, try to hit the breaking points, the apex, concentrate, we need you in the car. my rhythm here now. All of a sudden, I don't know why, he found his rhythm. From one moment to the other, the times were going down, you know, four, eight, seven, six, and four, two, and I was like, wow, this is quite impressive. He got the rhythm and suddenly you realize it's not that difficult and you start to improve yourself. And then you see the lap time goes down. This is also a motivation. I just was like, look, just drive. Just drive the car. I was like, don't get into this mental headspace again. Just drive around whatever problems there are. And then I just started driving. I started to figure out finally the rhythm of the place. I started to find a rhythm and start to understand it. And I was like, now I get it. I was braking at the right places, carrying the right speed into the corners. Yeah, stay in the car and do another hour. He radius in, I can stay in the car for the third stint. I found a rhythm now. I said, I can stay in the car another hour. I felt physically good. It's good, but on the other hand, it's dangerous because at one point you will get tired and then it's easier to make stupid mistakes. Your pain looks good, but uh, maybe it's better if you rest a couple of hours and then you go again. Uh, whatever you think, uh, I, don't, I don't mind. We will make this stick as long as possible. We do driver change and then you go again after two hours. Are you okay to do one more hour? Yes. He said it's okay to do it. Everyone's like, he's driving the best ever. I don't think it's smart to do three hours in a row anyways, but I mean... Hold on, you have to decide now. Everybody was like, you know what? It's your call. You got five seconds to think about it. And I knew that he's driving the fastest lap times at the moment, that he was in the rhythm. And I also knew that if he stays in for like the third stint, he's going to be done with his driving time. To be honest with you, I didn't have the, the guts to say, yes, we'll pull him out. I didn't have the balls to make that call. Okay. Fuel and tires. You stay in the car. just really enjoy myself. It's almost like he's breaking through that barrier that was always in his mind. When I got my best time, I did like a 3.59 something. And I was like, yes, this is it. You know, I've sort of, I was just driving, I was just enjoying every corner. It was just a really free flowing experience. It was amazing. All the sort of work that had gone into coming back this year, doing it, the emotions just started bubbling up. It was, it was, it was a phenomenal feeling. No more truck limits. Reminder, no more truck limits. Warning flag for truck limits. Warning flag for truck limits.
we should do the driver change. Huh? We should do the driver change to Richie and then... I feel very bad for him because they, I know all the effort, all the pressure. It's all good. good. Fucking crack limits. I can't keep hearing that shit in my ears, you know? Fucking idiot. I tried to hold on to Fuck it. Stupid goddamn track limits. Sorry, man. Fuck. I finally figured out the track, though. Yeah, you're flying, man. How many laps did I have left? Four? No, I think two or three. Oh, it was good driving the last then, though. Yeah, I mean. Finally fucking turned out. Weißt du, letztes Jahr hatte der einen, einen Albtraum hier. Und wir kommen zurück und es ist gar kein Fehler passiert, das ganze Rennwochenende. Und du hast ja, ja. in der Nacht im Regen am Trockenen. Und okay, jetzt ist ein Fahrfehler passiert, ein, ein Crash, einer von, von ganz vielen Crashs. Aber nicht so, dass du sagst, der gehört hier nicht her. Weißt du, also er ist schon gewachsen mit der Aufgabe und ich hoffe, er hat seine, seinen Albtraum äh, überwunden damit. Ne? Das, das will, ich, will ich ihm sagen. So sorry, dude. So sorry. I'm so sorry. I love you, man. You're fucking great. I'm so sorry I let you down. I feel bad because uh, all the project is for you, so all it's the It's not effort. for me, man. Listen, listen, I fucked up. Don't feel bad. You did everything right. I fucked up. It took me three and a half hours to figure it out. And to be honest with you, you know, I feel so bad for Martin, you, Richie, the entire team, Basti. But I actually feel pretty happy. I did. I came here and I achieved what I wanted to achieve, which was at some at one point you could hear me on the radio. I was so negative in the car. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Everything was getting to me. And then I thought. And, and then at one point I just switched my brain. I was like, okay, fucking cop on, adapt, figure it out, and I did. When we kept Stayed you in, in the car, I thought for, for sure he's enjoying. When you said fuck, because you did 359. I did it. Now. That was the only time I enjoyed that hour and a half immensely. And you know, I made a really rookie mistake, a really stupid mistake. I hated this fucking track until the last hour and a half I had a blast. So I'm happy about that. And I'm so sorry with all your fucking hard work. I fucking let you down, man. I'm sorry about that. Really, I am. And you too, dude. I'm sorry, man. You drove like a beast as always, and so did Martin. But I'm happy that you. You know, you, you you fought your demons. Yeah, man, and I did. You're not, not scared anymore about this race. It, it wasn't like, you know, I prefer to crash like that, going for it, than driving around like I did with the 4.8s, 4.9s, 4.10s. Last year, in 2022, to, you know, leave Le Mans, such a big race, such, such a, you know, prestigious race, and basically also the goal of this whole journey um, on such a low was but definitely the, the worst uh, worst moment of the whole journey. I think the most important thing for him coming back to Le Mans was basically forgetting what had happened the year before uh, and um, getting over that mental, uh, mental state of, you know, doubting himself and uh, his ability to drive a car. He could fight his demons uh, he had in his head, you know, he, he achieved his goal um, I think that the 359 meant a lot to him. My childhood dream was always to become a racer. The reality of the dream became something that I could never have imagined. 
Through all the ups and downs, disappointments and setbacks, I lost faith in myself and my own desire. There were many times when I asked myself, why am I doing this? A lesser version of myself would have quit. I'm so grateful to Lamont for teaching me to discover more about myself and to push myself, get back up and try again. Coming back this year, doing it, there were tears in my eyes. Fear of failure, that's the thing that can be so stifling and one can be so submerged by it. give up and to keep pushing through and the most important thing is to let go and just go for it. Oh, my God. 